attorney. Now let's move to item 27. Mr. O'Farrell, on item 27, let me say this. On item 27, there was a, 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 a mix-up in the Rules Committee, and there was some confusion that I believe that I caused. And so what I'd like to do now is reopen public comment for, let's say, 12 minutes, a minute each, uh, because I was unable to. In fact, I think we were both or all of us were a little confused, and I, I want to make sure they're afforded the opportunity. So why don't we start like this? Why don't you, I, uh, I want Rudy, Rudy Ortega will start with you, and then I think a Chris, Chrissy Castro, and uh, Hector Pacheco. So why don't we start like that, and if, if it's okay with Mr. O'Farrell, then the floor is yours, and sorry, for the mix-up in committee. No worries, Mr. President. Uh, Council President and Council Members, it's an honor to be here before you. I'd like to do two items, actually. One before I go on to item 27. Sure, well, I'll do it real quick. Actually, I have a presentation uh, uh, for all the Council Members here, if we can give these out. Heritage, Sergeants. Heritage Month is November, and we'd like to have all the Council Members invited, so it's an invitation and also an offering of sage bundles, a tradition in our native culture. So that one's, that one's done. Now the next one is the item number 27. I'm coming before you as the council member of the chairman of the Indian Commission and also, I'm sorry, chairman of the Indian Commission, a commissioner, and also I am the tribal president from the Ferdinand and Tatavi on Band of Mission Indians. We stand in support of the Sandy uh, Rock Sioux Tribe who's fighting the Dakota Access Pipeline. And many of us who stand behind me are in support as well as many other organizations and tribes throughout California as well as the Gabrielino, the chairman, Anthony Morales, sends his uh, support as well to me and says that he's in favor of this uh, motion and asks that the city council supports and thanks the city council members as well in supporting and passing the resolution in support of Standing Rock. I'll pass it over to Chris Thank Castro. you. So Ms. Castro, followed by Mr. Pacheco, followed by Mr. Quintana, I believe. Yes. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm Chrissy Castro. I'm a citizen of the Navajo Nation and uh, the Vice Chairwoman of the Los Angeles City County Native American Indian Commission. Today, our Los Angeles Indigenous community stands with Standing Rock in their fight for the protection of their sacred waters and lands and way of life. We say that Standing Rock is everywhere because our human rights and religious freedoms are being violated as we show up in prayer with women, with elders, with children, and we're met with state violence. From Standing Rock to the San Francisco Peaks, Mount Taylor, Red Butte, Gila River, Mauna Kea, Medicine Lake, Oak Flat, and here in California, Tongva, Tataviam, Hoopa, Yurok, Owens Valley, Ahashiman, Panhe, Pavanga, Banning Ranch, Playa Vista, we are all related and connected in knowing what's worthy of fighting for, water, land, and life. This is a beautiful moment where we're standing up and recognizing our unity and strength thank as indigenous peoples. And we stand here you. in solidarity and we thank, thank you for you. your support. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Hector Perez Pacheco. I'm a Quechua from the Confederation Tawantisuyu. And within our, they refer to us as uh, Incas. Within our traditions, we have our prophecies, and that's what guides us throughout our existence. And the prophecy of the condor and the eagle is unification of our nations and our peoples up and down this hemisphere. What is occurring in, in, in North Dakota, within the Standing Rock, um, within the pipeline, is within also another prophecy, which is the, which is the black snake prophecy. And, and so within all nations, tribes, up and down the hemisphere, around the world, we're coming together in support of Standing Rock. So we'd like to urge your support. And we'd we like to also acknowledge and thank uh, the Councilor Mitchell Farrell for taking this, uh, taking this issue, that, which is a very important issue for our communities and for the future of life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So next is it uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Quintana, followed by, I believe, Carolyn or Caroline Ward. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Um, uh, my name is Joseph Quintana. I'm from San Domingo Pueblo. That's out of New Mexico. 
But as you know, we have so many different American Indian populations in this particular area. We appreciate your time and consideration. I represent a nonprofit organization that currently provides human services for over 100 different tribal members. That means tribal customs, tribal beliefs, tribal languages. But there's one common denominator that befits all of our people, and that's a very, not only it's a native perspective, but it's a very human perspective. And that perspective is, how do we harness protected sacred water? We know how sacred it is because it's not only happening in Standing Rock, but what could potentially happen here in our own territory. We know in Los Angeles with this drought, um, the impact that it has on all of our people. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate your support. We hope that you learn. Not only do you learn, but also your public, your constituents also learn about what is happening out there, not only in Standing Rock, but across Indian country. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have Ms. Ward? Please come forward. And I can't make out all of the, the, the name, but the middle initial or nickname is Grumpy. So if you grumpy, you're next. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, my name is Caroline Ward-Holland, and I am a tribal citizen for the Brennan Daniel Tataviam. I'm also the leader of Nimpitin Nagam, which is Walk for the Ancestors. And my son and I walked 780 miles from Sonoma, California to San Diego to honor the indigenous ancestors of this area, our tribal homeland. Um, the indigenous struggles that we have need to be addressed. and uh, I, myself, and the indigenous people of this area do support Standing Rock, and we ask that you come to a resolution to do so as well. Thank you. Come forward and give us the, all of the names. Okay. <laughs> Nestel, hello. I am Tatoni Quetzalcoa, Grumpy, Reynoso. I am of the Eagle Toltec Nation here standing before you. Also, a strong member and representative of the local Teamsters 396. We are over 10,000 strong. We had our national general meeting last Sunday, and I put it on the dock to vote if we could stand by our brothers and sisters in Sandy Rock. And unanimously, it was voted to agree to stand with Sandy Rock, with our brothers, the protectors, because we are all water. That's why we say water is life. And also, we are also in union with the Harmony Keepers and CUSA, another founding warrior society to protect all nations of Mother Earth. And we are here before you. And also, our brother, Mitch O'Farrell, his family is a hardcore Thank teamster. And we stand strong Thank behind you. this. And we want you to vote with your mind Thank clear. You. Well, that's why we have the stage funding. Thank you. To vote Thank you, Mr. Rock. Reynoso. Thank, Thank you. Teamsters in the house. Thank you. So if I could get now Oscar De La Torre, I think Marcos uh, Aguilar, and Edward, uh, is it Wim Tinwa? Please identify yourself, sir. Good morning. My name is Oscar De La Torre. Uh, good morning, members of the council. Um, my, I'm a school board member in the city of Santa Monica, the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District. And I stand today uh, very proud of all of you, all the uh, various issues that, that were supported earlier today uh, during the council meeting. And I know that there's support for this resolution. I want to thank Council Member O'Farrell for bringing this resolution forward because water, life, Mother Earth is important to protect. We need to, we need to do what we can to ensure that uh, we protect our residents, our people, from hazardous materials and toxins that exist in our environments. And, and I come from a community that, very, that prides itself in doing so. Um, I want to let you all know that by you passing this resolution today, you're inspiring us uh, in the city of Santa Monica to bring forward a similar resolution. So I'll, I'll make sure that we do that uh, to send uh, a strong message that we're all united in Southern California to support Standing Rock and the people that are fighting for dignity and for self-determination. And God bless you all for your work. Thank you. And thank you for yours. Okay, Aguilar, Mr. Aguilar, then I need Edward, and then I have a Judith Garcia and an Emiliano Martinez. Yes, sir, identify yourself, please. Marcos Aguilar, Executive Director of Semilla Sociedad Civil in East LA and Council Member of Wissage District. I want to commend Council Members O'Farrell, Weston, Koritz, and Wissage for considering the support of the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota peoples 
and the Standing Rock Sioux Nation in particular. As one of two heads of schools uh, of the only Indigenous People's Public Community School in Los Angeles County, Anahuacalmecac, I urge this council to adopt a strong resolution against the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline in support of the sovereign Standing Rock Nation, Sioux Nation and against the use of violence by police and private armed guards to suppress the prayers and protection represented by the hundreds of indigenous persons gathered at the Red Warrior Camp and the Sacred Stone Camp. Our school In fact, community let me was stop you for one second. Mr. Spindler, sit down and show respect to these folks that are here. That you are not speaking, they're speaking. And I'm not going to let you sit stand up there behind them and ridicule what it is they're trying to do by waving a pig. You're disrupting this meeting. Now sit down. This is very important to all these people that have come from as far as New Mexico. That I'm not having. I am so sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Aguilar. Continue. Thank you very much. We heard earlier today that this day is a great day for apologies, and this country owes much apology to indigenous peoples, to the children in particular of indigenous peoples in this continent. Your, your resolution today is a beginning. On behalf of the over half million indigenous children and families in Los Angeles, we call upon all governments and agencies to respect all treaties. We call upon this council to adopt and implement the Indigenous Peoples Day with all due haste. And we also call upon this council to adopt and implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Thank Peoples. Thank you very much. No. Water is life. Thank you. So if I could have the next speaker please come forward and identify himself. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, Honorable uh, City Council. My name is Edward Wimaitiwa. I'm a community leader from the Zuni Reservation. I've been to Stand Rock Reservation. I've met with the Chief Dave Archimbold and a young, uh, young leader, an attorney named Chase Iron Eyes. These are prominent leaders at the camp, and I just want to say that it's, it's a hard life they're living right now. At the camp, the, these leaders whom I mentioned are out there trying to work with the peoples, trying to feed the peoples, trying to keep the supporters warm, but at the same time, they're addressing heavy legal issues, a lot of responsibility, especially when you're deciding how you're going to spend your people's monies. Resources are hard to come by, not only financial resources, but in protecting our tribal natural resources. Please support the resolution, and I commend Thank you strongly. Thank you, sir. Okay, so do I have Ms. Garcia? Followed by Emiliano Martinez. Followed by I think it's uh, I think it's it's Mo Monique Castro maybe. Yes, ma'am. Good yes. morning. My name is Juliet Garcia. I live in uh, Echo Park, and I'm a uh, um, head dancer, head Aztec dancer. And I'm here to support uh, the um, the struggle of a standing rock to thrive and in other communities in their struggle against this dangerous and destructive pipeline, North Dakota Access Pipeline. Oil, oil pipelines break, spill, and leak. It is not a question of if, it is a question of where and when. But the Army Corps of Engineers are easing a permit, and they never took a hard look at the impacts of the spill on the tribe and as the law requires. Now, the pipeline will run through the land that is sacred to the tribe. The law requires that sacred places be protected in consultation with the tribe. So we Thank ask you to please stand Thank with you. Stand. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. If I give you more, I have to give other people more, and I do apologize. So if I can get Emiliano, followed by, I believe it's uh, Ms. Castro. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, as the case may be. And uh, I just want to say my name is Emiliano Martinez of the Uemi Yaki tribe and uh, um, native of L.A. as well, born and raised here in, in beautiful Boyle Heights. And uh, I just wanted to um, put forth the motion, too, that we, we – uh, uh, need to do our part here, and, and it's a great day that you all are considering this uh, motion uh, to stand with Standing Rock. Standing Rock is everywhere. Water is life. Uh, we cannot live without the water. 
uh, the fresh water to drink, and uh, this issue affects millions upon millions of people, and it's not just over there, it's here, and uh, we're, we're addressing it. Thank you so much. Uh, we want uh, also uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. I know that's coming up too, so we want you all to support that, and thank you so much for your time. Thank American you. American Indian Movement, Southern California, also here. Thank you. So for our last speaker, please identify yourself. Hello, good morning, afternoon. My name is Monique Castro. I am a citizen of the Navajo Nation, born and raised here in Los Angeles. Thank you for having me. Um, I just want to say that um, I am in support with all my other brothers and sisters and indigenous people across our, our entire world, um, standing with Standing Rock, and we really do appreciate your support in, stand in supporting Standing Rock and the no access um, no access uh, Dakota pipeline. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I know there may have been other cards, but we reopened uh, public comment for an additional, uh, I think the request was 10 minutes. We did it over 12 minutes. Thank each and every one of you. Some of you have come from far uh, distances. Some have come from Santa Monica. And we appreciate you coming down, down the road. With that said, I'd like to recognize Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. I also want to thank everyone for coming to Council Chambers today and uh, from near and far, um, as Council President Wesson mentioned, all the way from New Mexico. Um, just, colleagues, what we need to understand is that this has become an indigenous people's movement across the world uh, with our allies across the world and indigenous peoples everywhere. This has really bubbled up to be one issue that I think collectively everyone is ready to take on for a variety of reasons. And let me just talk about a few facts of the matter. And uh, let me also say I neglected to mention I'm a proud member of the Wyandotte Nation. Here are some facts of the matter. This, um, the Army Corps of Engineers permitted this North Dakota access pipeline through what is called Permit 12. Permit 12 is a mechanism of the Clean Waters Act enacted in October 8, 1972. It's a 50-page document, discusses ways to streamline small projects, much smaller than this project, and that's a very important component of this entire argument, small projects. General permit program intended for minimal environmental impacts. It's worth to note that in North Dakota alone, in the last few years, there have been hundreds and hundreds of pipeline breaks, oil pipeline breaks. Uh, and we know that this pipeline also traverses the Missouri River, which is the water source for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Um, in this case, it was used for an interstate pipeline, claiming that this one mega project was in fact hundreds of smaller projects under the guise of Permit 12 for the transport of hazardous materials through waterways and communities. It's given the size, scope, impact, and the misleading nature of how this was permitted that this permit should not have been used. And that is the crux um, of the issue. Unfortunately, in North Dakota, they don't have what California has. We have California Environmental Quality Act. They don't have that. This act bypassed NEPA, which is the National Environmental Policy Act. Uh, so this action of the Army Corps of Engineers violates not only what we feel is the law of the land, but the spirit of all that matters to tribal nations across the United States. Uh, so uh, what we want to make sure uh, that we do is that we include, uh, we, we hereby um, include in our federal legislation program support of any legislation or administration action that upholds the rights of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and denies the construction of the Dakota Access pipeline through their lands. It's real basic. And for anyone who is struggling with the question of, well, what does this have to do with Los Angeles? Well, what we do in Los Angeles matters to the rest of the country. This is an opportunity for us to stand up to indigenous peoples and native tribes across the country and stand up for what's right, quite frankly. We have a, a bloody history of broken treaty after broken treaty after broken treaty that has led um, to uh, the de degradation of, of Native America. And I think this uh, puts us uh, in great company with other cities, municipalities, and other groups uh, that uh, are opposing this illegal uh, approval. And it puts us in um, a real good place 
of power and influence uh, all the way to Washington, D.C. So let's stand up for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and by doing that, we stand up for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I seconded this resolution, and I rise in strong, strong support of Councilmember O'Farrell's effort and greatly appreciate it. Literally every day around the world, we now have some kind of extreme climate event, every single day. Um, just last night, Salisbury, Maryland, received nine and a half inches of rain, which is about what we get in a year in California now. Uh, Detroit is flooding as we speak, and there are multiple floods uh, around the world. Many climate scientists believe that we have fewer than 10 years to turn this around and, and uh, still have a surviving human race. The bottom line is we have to stop building fossil fuel infrastructure. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in North Dakota and so many in indigenous peoples um, in North and South America, many of whom are represented right here today, um, are standing up to the fossil fuel industry and just saying no, as all of you are here today to say. Um, you're saying no, not on our land. You're protecting your ancestral sites. You're protecting your burial grounds and sacred sites. You're protecting your water. And most relevant to Los Angeles, you're protecting our common planet. And we must stand with the Standing Rock Tribe and the indigenous peoples because you are standing for all of us. So thank you so much for being here, and I hope we pass this unanimously and send a critical message to the rest of the country and the rest of the world. Thank you. Okay, now, now there, there are no more speakers. Let's uh, take this very important vote. Madam Clerk, would you please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote? Twelve ayes. That is unanimously approved. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, Madam, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, if we could send all of the items from the special forthwith. With that said, if we could adjourn uh, the special and return to our regular meeting. <laughs>